Hello, welcome to the Gym RPG Show. This is a gaming news and analysis channel. Last week I looked at whether 10 gigabytes of VRAM was going to be enough on the RTX 3080, and since then I thought about it a little bit more, and I think there are other things that should be discussed. So I decided to make another video about it. So today I want to talk about three things. Number one, VRAM usage versus VRAM allocation. Number two, how developers consider VRAM for their games, and also what the baseline hardware might be. And number three, the lifespan of a GPU. Now, just to give you an idea of where we're heading, there's going to be arguments made for 10 gigabytes being enough and also not being enough. So I don't want people to assume that the video sounds a little bit confused because at the moment, there really isn't a good answer for this. People are really going to have to use their own judgment whether it's enough or not. Now, at the end of the video, I will try and answer whether you should buy the 10 gigabyte 3080 or the rumored 3080 20 gigabyte. With that out of the way, let's get going. Number 1. VRAM Usage versus VRAM Allocation In the last video I made about this issue, I used YouTube videos with benchmarks which show the VRAM allocation rather than the VRAM usage. There's a post on the Resetera forums by Dark Talent about this. If you got the feeling from my previous video some of the games have very high VRAM usage, then just know what's shown was a VRAM allocation and not the actual VRAM usage, so it's likely that the VRAM usage is less. That said, it's difficult to determine how much less and what the actual usage is because there are many ways to measure it. Right now, there's only one of two ways. Either use a dev tool in-game that shows the actual VRAM usage versus allocated like there is in MS Flight Simulator 2020, or you can use a tool called Special K that shows a VRAM usage. To show this in action, the screen shows MS Flight Sim 2020 dev tool and it shows that it uses 2.4 gigabytes of VRAM used versus 5.9 gigabytes allocated. Special K shows 2.4 gigabytes used, while the benchmark shows 5.9 gigabytes allocated. This is for ultra wide 1440p resolution. Now, before everyone shouts, 10 gigabytes is perfectly fine for 4K. A few users have taken screens that show 8.75 gigabytes of VRAM and 9 gigabytes of VRAM used in 4K for MS Flight Sim 2020. So this is definitely a VRAM heavy game that runs close to the 3080 limit. Now I wish I had more games to show you with VRAM limits, but right now there's not a whole lot of resources online, both on YouTube or articles in general, on actual VRAM usage. But I believe once people get their hands on a 3080 and a 3070, people will want to test VRAM usage out and there will be more results available. Number 2. Developer Needs and Considerations In the meantime, let's think about the VRAM issue further in other ways. Here's a post from programmer Billy Khan from idtech. So Billy writes, when buying a new video card for your PC, always buy the card with the highest amount of video RAM within your allocated budget. If you're in the market now, look for cards with at least 8GB of VRAM. Next gen games will require a large amount of memory. 8GB will be the minimum bar for VRAM very soon. 6GB is not enough. If you're oversubscribed on VRAM, many allocations fall back to system memory, which incurs massive performance penalties. Running other software while gaming also reduces your available VRAM. Even at resolutions below 4K, higher VRAM is the way to go. 8GB will be the low end in short order. So I think this ties in well with the fact that consoles are moving to 4K as the baseline this generation, so we're going to see a bump up in VRAM usage. Many games in development will consider consoles as a baseline. Xbox Series X, for example, will be 10GB of 560GB per second and 6GB at 336GB per second, while on the PS5 it will be 448GB per second for all 16GB though naturally part of this will be reserved for the OS. For a comparison, the RTX 3080 will have 10 gigabytes at 760 gigabytes per second, so it remains to be seen how all this will play out. While developers may want to see gamers upgrade to higher amounts of VRAM, developers will also want to make their software work on a range of hardware to maximize market size for game. 
it will be about striking a balance between realizing their vision for the game and allowing for as many gamers to play as possible. So it won't be that the game won't run at all. It might be that it doesn't run as well on lesser hardware. Now the X-Plane dev also wrote about VRAM allocation on his blog in January and I'll leave a link in the description below for this blog post. So the thing is, if you don't have enough VRAM, developer will find other ways and this may include lower resolution textures. Overall, my point here is that VRAM usage is both a hard limit set by hardware available, such as consoles, but will also be something that is dependent on the developer and how they want to produce the game. Ultimately, gamers should ask themselves what type of gamer they are. Are they middle tier, medium level graphics gamers? or high tier ultra level graphics gamers and purchase hardware accordingly. This is the choice you're making between a 10 gigabyte 3080 and a 20 gigabyte 3080 and only you can decide this. Number three, lifespan of a GPU. Finally, whether 10 gigabytes of VRAM is going to matter also depends on other elements of the GPU itself, such as actual performance and other features like DLSS which affect the lifespan of a GPU. If you're going to replace the card every two years, 10 gigabytes isn't going to matter. Hardware Unboxed tried to answer a similar question about a year and a half ago when they looked at a similar issue with the RTX 2060 with 6 gigabytes of RAM and whether that was enough for 1440p gaming and I'll leave a link to the video below. So while the following quote is paraphrased, I think it's very interesting. Now they did not have any special tools to work with at the time other than Reva Tuner Statistics Server so they had to assume when the car ran out of VRAM by watching for a massive frame drop. So they really had to make assumptions about the longevity of the card at 1440p. That said I think it's interesting their gut feel is pretty much in line with probably what most people are thinking with the RTX 3080 at 10 gigabytes, and that is year one there won't be any issues at all. Year two, there might be a few issues. In year three, there'll probably be some more issues. Year four, there'll definitely be more issues. And in year five, there will be many more issues than year four. So it's likely the 3080 will follow a similar path to this. It's unlikely people will really have issue at 4K in the first couple of years. Years three and four will be anyone's guess and I'd guess that most keen gamers will upgrade after 4 years anyway and cars will probably encounter various performance issues not just VRAM that might slow it down. So let's recap this collection of thoughts. Right now there aren't many benchmarks that actually show the VRAM usage in games but with the 3080 and 3070 launching I think there will be more benchmarks online later as people will want to know whether these cards support 4K. While developers will always want users to upgrade their hardware so more performance is available, developers still also maintain control over how they develop their games and for what market size they want to develop it for. Finally, as we've seen in the past, most hardware follows a typical trajectory where it's great the first couple of years before it starts to show its age. And if you're a seasoned PC gamer, then you should probably follow your own judgment on whether 10 gigabytes of VRAM is enough for you. With all that said, the prices for these cards are out already, so let's answer the question, should you buy the 10 gigabyte 3080 or wait for the rumored 3080 20 gigabyte? Now I think if it's only $100 to jump up to the 20 gigabyte version, then I think most people will want to future proof themselves a little bit and get the 20 gigabyte 3080. If it's $200 or more to jump up to the 20 gigabyte 3080, then I think it's probably better to save that $200 on another GPU somewhere down the line, or possibly wait for the 3080 Ti, which will have more performance. And I think people should only consider the $1,499 3090 if that's the performance that they actually need and not the VRAM that it actually has. So that about does it for this video. Click the like button if you like this video and make sure to subscribe to this channel for more gaming videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.